First off, I'm not shirtless because it's 100 degrees outside and I just spent three hours in a fucking coffee shop without any kind of air conditioning. That's not at all why I'm shirtless. I'm shirtless because of the heat from Kendrick Lamar's verse still reverberating like a fucking nuclear bomb. Shout out to Oppenheimer. Ten years later. This is a video that is going to be shortly, I want to shortly kind of give my thoughts of uh, Control by Kendrick ten years later. Uh, you hear a thousand sounds going on, my fucking cunt fucking neighbors up top, um, cars going by. I can't help it, dude. But secondly, let's just talk about the simple fact that one motherfucker released a verse that was so fucking good that the entire rap game came together and was like, holy shit, I have a reaction to that verse. That hasn't happened in the 10 years since that damn song came out. Third, Big Sean fucked up by not clearing that sample. I don't care what it took. I don't care if it to come out like Mad Lib and just not clear the sample. I'm not sample snitching, by the way. It just happens to be a lot of samples that Mad Lib uses that are not cleared. But I'm not snitching on that. I'm just saying it as an observation. Anyway, um, Big Sean should just clear the shit anyway. Or not clear the shit. Just put it out there. Who gives a fuck? I mean, you get sued, what, $5 million, $10 million. That song would have got that motherfucker at least, well, you get like point zero zero three <laughs> fucking cents for a stream of a song. So maybe a good $500, but it would have been worth it. It would have been worth the loss because that shit was legendary. There is certain moments in history that you can maybe kind of reapproximate for somebody that wasn't there to experience it. This one, you fucking can't. If you were not there... Uh, I believe it came out on, I want to say SoundCloud first. But it was also on YouTube around the Central Time. But if you weren't on like some forum, Twitter, uh, actually Premiere Funk Flex, but I, I listened to it on SoundCloud. Um, if you weren't listening to Funk Flex in fucking New York City, I guess, it, it just, you couldn't understand at that moment. Even if you like, listen after the fact, you need to be there like in the first, I would say the first like 12 hours First fucking first twelve minutes that shit came out to just get like niggas was in streets going crazy, dude. I played that shit for like my my stepdad. He was like, holy shit. Uh, I played it for fucking other people. They were like, holy shit. Uh, people I didn't even know. Came to me. It was like, holy shit. I mean, it was just like if you appreciated any semblance of hip hop, shit. Even you didn't. Even you was just like. I liked uh, Poetic Justice, I liked Fucking Problems, um, and you know, you were just loosely associated with uh, Kendrick, or you listen to Big Sean, and you kind of like, you just skip past his verse and got the Kendrick's. <laughs> and the, I mean, just, just imagine the premise of a artist being so willing to get Renegated, which Renegated is kind of like, uh, it's a song by... Uh, Jay Z, that basically is Eminem's song. Eminem stole the show. Um, to be willing to be renegated on your own song. This song is pretty much in effect because he didn't have the ability to clear it uh, for the album. A promo single for his album. I believe it came up before Hall of Fame. I want to say. Um, I want to say. I may be wrong about that, but I want to say. Um, and this was a pretty big album for him. I don't know if it was his first album. So he, I know he had finally famous. Which was, I believe, an album. I think Detroit was his landmark mixtape. So I want to say it was Detroit, finally famous in the Hall of Fame. Uh, but this was like Big Sean is a giant figure in uh, in music, um, at least at that point in time. And this motherfucker, his one of his promo singles, in effect, was a song of him getting renegated by the biggest name in hip hop at that point in time. Um, that's. <laughs> I mean, to be willing to compete on that level, to take the, you know, it's going to, it, he knew there would have been people making fun of how good Kendrick was in relation to everybody else. And I don't think his first was really better on a technical level than everybody else's, but simply put, it was the verse that was going to still show. That was just a simple fact that matter. Anybody had a semblance of a decent IQ would have been able to kind of assume that was going to be the case. Um, so... He just took that shit on the chin. He was like, fuck it. I think my verse could compete against his. Um, I'm a competitor. Uh, I came from 
more dire straits than a fucking rap, not battle or beef. Um, although I, I do think there were some. <laughs> I, at this point, you could flash the tweets on the stage uh, or the screen, but there were just tons of niggas that were in their feelings about this song, um, in ways that maybe they don't want to stretch it out to the actual beef. Like Drake subbed Kendrick for years after that. Uh, Big Sean subbed Kendrick for years after that. Um, Jay Electronica felt a type of way about that verse. Um, Lupe had these kind of like pretend like disses, even though I think they kind of are. Lupe is someone that like, I'm a big Lupe fan. Um, he's very self-conscious of how he's kind of perceived as a legend in hip hop. Um, not necessarily just a Kendrick, but he has tons of kind of, uh, tweets and bars and things of that nature. Kind of like, you know, proclaiming himself as one of the guys in the 2000s to kind of like make it palatable for like conscious yet somewhat mainstream mainstream successful artist um i don't think he's overtly kind of like pat himself on the back in that nature but just you know he definitely something he's done before um and all these other rappers that weren't as subtle with their kind of responses um but big sean like i mean he it's his song he put that song out he could at any point and I, you could tell with the certain sections of his verse that he definitely did get kendrick's verse before the song was completed, because he definitely, I don't want to say re-recorded his verse, but he definitely added parts to his verse um, that were a reaction to Kendrick. Like, that's just I mean, an objective fact. I would assume that he put his verse out first, then got Kendrick's and Jay Electronica's, and they kind of re-recorded his, and they put the song out. Um, but very strong-willed and strong-minded thing about him, no matter what. He deserves to be champion for putting that song out. That song uh, probably... And it's 10 years since that, almost 10 years to the day. As I'm recording this, 10 years to the day, when this comes out, who knows. But um, 10 years to the day, and right smack dab in the middle of this um, kind of commemoration of hip-hop being around for 50 years. Um, it's the seminal moment in rap since it came out, in my opinion. Especially if you want to like exclude like beefs, like diss tracks. I mean, even though I think the reason that one is so popular is because it is kind of a diss track, but <laughs> I mean, if you want to exclude those moments, like, there's nothing comparable. Like, the only thing I can even think is close is uh, Pusha T's diss of Drake. Uh, maybe you could say Drake's diss of Meek Mill, even though I think the former is bigger than the latter uh, by quite a bit because the latter was just not as um, <laughs> natural. I don't know. I could do a whole different video about like how manufactured the response to um, what was it back to back uh, by Drake that just felt like way more of a, a kind of media hyped reaction. Although he did beat the shot of Drake or, or Meek Mill lyrically, but I think Story of Added On felt more uh, generic and uh, def definitely more scathing. <laughs> than uh, than fucking back to back, but all I have to say that like I don't think it's been a moment that's even in the same realm if you exclude disses uh, to control, and I don't know if there ever will be. I don't think hip hop is in a state and has not been a state in a while to where I think people appreciate it for some of those uh, tenets that made hip hop a genre that could survive and even thrive, um, as well as what led into control being so engaging for other artists to interact with and opine on like competition i don't think it's a lot of dudes who want to compete in a lyrical sense um i, I haven't seen a ton of them there's some i don't like some of them i mean but there's some guys that do spit nowadays that do try to uh foster that same level but it's just like also like that generation that Kendrick came in. It's probably like the last generation that like were mainstream successful, and at some point in careers made sure to put like a um a pin on being as good a rapper as their predecessors. You can say Asher Bronson was a fucking like people call him like you know uh, I think it's a Ghostface Killer clone, um, a Vulture blah blah blah. Asher Bronson is someone that legitimately competed in rap as the combat sport it is 
Action Bronson is someone that even you can say maybe borrowed some cadences from guys before him. This dude says cool shit. And when he first came on, he made sure to be a spitter first. It wasn't like he was on the Post Malone shit, just like basically making country ballads or, or rock shit. I mean, he was sampling rock. But in a way that was, you know, felt like it was always hip-hop first. Uh, Danny Brown, Joey Badass, uh, Big Sean, Jay Electronica, who's a little bit older than Kendrick, but, you know, same girl idea. Um, Schoolboy Q, ASAP Rocky. Uh, well, ASAP Rocky, I guess. Yeah, it's, to some degree. ASAP Rocky, like, did his ties. Like, he did the hip-hop shit. I mean, you can catch him on tons of ciphers and, and very lyrical tracks, putting out great verses. So I'm going to give Rocky his props. Um, even Tyler or Earl, uh, so forth and so forth, um, you know, Gambino even, I mean, um, so many people that, that committed to rap on the most fundamental level, what rap was when they were kids. And for whatever reason, I don't know if there's a ton of people that engage with rap in that way that are, you know, the more, more popular rappers nowadays. There's some, there's your, your Billy Woods, uh, you know, Lucid, uh, you know, fucking Arm and Hammer. Um, Griselda, Griselda, Griselda. By Fashion Rebels. Um, Makami, you know, fucking, I, I guess, Fahim, I guess. Um, Yoro Drug, and so forth and so forth. Um, I don't know if it's as viable in the mainstream as it was before. There's still ways to make money. I mean, fuck, if you're Mark Homme, you just charge the fucking difference between what records would have sold back then and what they sell now. Just price motherfuckers about $2,000. Shit, 20 people buy it, you're fucking in the damn green by quite a bit. So there's ways to make money out here as a, a lyrical rapper, but it's just, um, it doesn't feel as palatable in the mainstream as it used to be. Like, just using Mark Homme as an example, Mark Homme is somebody that should be like, I would say like as, a, as an analog, like probably about absolute level as an artist you know, give or take i mean like absolute and, and his probable peak which is about 2012 2013 2014 should probably be about where mark homie is at give or take and i don't know if he is like in terms of like like relevancy and mainstream whatever ethereal bullshit like that i don't know if he is like i you know i mean literally control system um the Kendrick song, um, I don't think, I don't think drug, druggy, uh, what the fuck was it? Drugs with Hoes? I forgot the name of the song. I don't know if that, like, the third one was on that album, but he had songs that were relevant in, like, light mainstream culture, like, a little bit. Like, Grand Theft Auto, not necessarily on the radio, but, like, you get what I'm saying here. Um, did good views on YouTube, all that shit. I think, generally speaking, and with how mysterious I think Absol was, I feel like that's a good analog for, like, Mock Homme. I don't know where the fuck I... How did I get to this time? Um, anyway. <laughs> Control. Um, amazing moment in hip-hop. And I hope that people really, like, put stock in going back and, like, following some of the shit that happened around that time. Like, I'm gonna put some fucking screenshots in this video and shit like that, but, like, I recommend going to Twitter. I will say it's hard on Twitter now, because Twitter, uh, X, X is, that's so fucking whack, dude. Twitter, Twitter's, like, search capacity is way fucking worse than it used to be. Like, you can just look for shit that happened, like, a week ago, and you can, like, Tweets that you may even have bookmarked will not pop up in the fucking search. So you can type in the content verbatim. Just some fucking tweets just don't show up in the search bar anymore. Um, and I I like to think it's because they have way less resources dedicated towards this fucking burning shit over a website than they used to have um, because they're fucking pussy. Um, owner, just fire motherfuckers. And decide to do a skint back version of this fucking application. Uh, so Twitter isn't the greatest resource to find this shit, but usually we have like archive.org, shit like that. You can like kind of like type in words, uh, type in dates, and get to a certain point. Um, there's tons of articles that still exist that you can just type in Google and find NPR, 
um, SSL, you know, the fader, pitchfork, whatever, um, you can find articles from that time period. Just just go back at YouTube videos. I think YouTube might even be the best way to find like visual uh, reactions and shit to the to this time period because the videos are worthwhile too. The tweets are a little bit more honest because the tweets are from like celebrities that you know I'm kind of referencing here. But if you want to see like random fucking people like me, I react to this shit. I didn't react to it because I was fucking 14 when this came out. But um, <laughs> there's people out there that that did the YouTube videos and shit. Um, yeah, yeah, go back and go back and listen to shit. I'm gonna think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, this video raw. I might even edit it. I may just well, I, I do need to edit because I need to put the screenshots up here, but I'm gonna try to put this as raw as possible because this is a very raw moment. And um excuse me if I'm not wearing a fucking shirt. I am actually not wearing a shirt because it's fucking hot shit outside, but I had the video done and um yeah. Peace.